One of the projects that I'm currently working on is the imaging part of a Dutch catalog that we're working on. And we were able to plan enough ahead of time so that we can not only have time to look at all of the Dutch pieces that we want to be in the catalog, but we also have the time to potentially uh, do treatment for them. But before we do that, we needed to look at them more closely. Having enough time ahead of time allowed us to actually image it in a little bit more detail than we might do for every single piece that comes through the department. So in particular, this piece here is a, is a painting that's currently on exhibit. And what we do is we pull it down and then we'll do uh, a, a range of images to them. This is what we determined to be kind of uh, a good starting point before we wanted to have potentially more images. You'll, you won't see very many detail shots in this. We wanted to get something on file so that we have something that the curators and the historians can look at. So again, with this one, we decided to do uh, a kind of studio setup for light. That's the first kind of overall type of image we would do, which is this piece here. Um, but we also do have continuous lights, which I use to do some exposures as well, just so that we had uh, a couple different types of lighting behavior on this specific piece. Um, we also will then do raking shots, and we do not just do one raking shot. I tend to do a bracket of that so that you can see an amount of light over time against the surface of this piece so you can see that you can you can really start to pick up the surface texture of the paintings going on. Uh, in this case we go from left to right um, as our kind of go-to raking shot. After I do my raking shot and any specific details that might have been told ahead of time we then will do uh, a bank of UV shots on the, on the image as well. Uh, and you'll see here that they often have a blue tint to them. We use filters uh, and long exposures to be able to get these shots. And you'll be able to see uh, certain changes that have been made along the way. You'll see in this piece specifically, there's a lot of touch up done in this spot here. And I'll switch back to the studio light. And you'll be able to see that you do not see all those changes that were made there. Yet here, you'll see all these dark areas, which are indication of, uh, of changes made along the way. Just like in raking, I, I do it over an amount of time. Different things show up differently at different uh, amounts of light. Uh, one of the real benefits of the Dutch catalog is not just that we can take regular shots of the, of the piece uh, under various lighting techniques, we can also shoot the back. And in this case, I'm able to spend the time to do the same lighting techniques on the back that I did on the front. In this case right here, this is a UV of the back. And you can start to pick up, sorry it takes a minute to load, you can start to pick up varnishes that might have came over the back of it, and just like the front I do a, a range of them. On the back as well, uh, the raking light on the back is, is very telling often for w how, the, how the wood panel in this case was created. You can see the tooling marks of the, of the chisel or whatever the, the tool was that was made on the back, which can often very much tell you if it's a newer or an older or who might have made the and at what time it was done. Also just normal light shots of the back. For documentation you'll see in this one there are remnants of tags and different layers on here might have been stamps of some kind. The, the two more labor-intensive shots that we, we, we do and I have time to do for this is the infrared shot as well as an x-ray shot. This is the infrared of this piece here. You'll see again in this area here under the infrared spectrum you don't see the paint or the touch-up paint that you, you saw in these earlier images. In the infrared you're actually seeing things that are farther through the paint layer this specific hammer we use goes up to about 1700 nanometers. Um, it makes for making things sharp uh, particularly difficult. Um, the images seem a little hazy but you're actually seeing through paint layers so it, you have to expect that you not only have to focus past what you can physically see with your eye, you have to then uh, be able to focus at that level as well. So it takes a, a very uh, precise, precise touch to be able to, to do that. Some paintings are easier than others. Uh, anything with a major warp in it can be a, a, a particular issue. Uh, after that, I'll do an x-ray. And this is an x-ray of the, of the, of the uh, this is actually two x-rays put together, one of the top and one of the bottom, and put together uh, via Photoshop. And you'll see that there's remnants of a painting underneath this painting, which is uh, always exciting to, to come across in this. Uh, 
I don't know anything about this particular uh, painter or why or who this or what this is. Um, but again, we give these images to the conservator curator and they can then decide how they want to go from there. And just for reference, these are the same x-ray but in reverse. I know it's on its side. Um, but sometimes you can pick up characteristics in, in the reverse, the black to white, uh, a little easier than you can in the, the white to black. So we try to make sure that that's available too for the, the curator, the conservator um, to use as they wish. Once I get all these, I'll go through and I will color balance these, add some metadata for them, and then put them on our digital asset management system so that they can download them and use them. If there is any work done to these, then they will come back in later after they've had their work done and I will reshoot these. Hopefully be able to reshoot them in the entire uh, cadre of, of, of images so we'll be able to, to truly document what was done to it.